Let us bow our heads and our hearts as we pray. Hallelujah. Most holy and righteous God, we come before your presence this evening, God. Lord, we just want to offer ourselves up to you, O oh God. Lord, as we present ourselves in your house for worship, O oh God, we ask, mighty God, that you will wash us, that you will cleanse us, O oh God, from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, mighty God. Remove every dross, mighty God. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, God, and make us holy to stand before you and to be in your presence tonight, God. For your word tells us, God, that we should be holy as you are holy. Lord, we desire to have sweet communion with you this evening, God. So, Lord, let your Holy Spirit. 
spirit just burn through us tonight, oh God, as we offer ourselves before you, Lord. Uh, with all of our heart, with all of our mind. God, we give you our bodies, God, to use as you feel tonight, oh God. Bind us together, mighty God. Hallelujah. Father God, let your presence be felt in the midst of us, oh God. And Lord, make us worthy to be before you tonight, God, as we tell you thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to remain standing. And can I just ask the persons who are farther to the back, can you come just a little closer? We're going to go into our praise and worship session. And I know that everyone has come tonight with something to praise God for. Hallelujah. And if you don't feel like you have a spirit of praise tonight, I know you must come with a spirit of worship. Amen. And if you came with a spirit of worship, it means that you will also praise. Amen, church. So let us put our hands together. Let us stamp our feet. Let us just give everything to God tonight as we lift up the worship and the praise to him. And the praise team will be coming again and they will be leading us into worship. Hallelujah. 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 Can you lift your hands and magnify the Lord? Can we just worship the Lord God? Can we lift up the kings this night? Can we just celebrate the name of Jesus? Can we continue to get excited for the name of the Lord as we enter into worship? Oh, just let your worship connect to my worship and let us connect to the heavenly being as we begin to just lift up the name of the Lord. Oh, welcome, Holy Spirit. Oh, welcome, Heavenly Dove. Oh, welcome, Rock of Ages. Oh, welcome, I am that I am. Oh, welcome, Bread of Life. Oh, welcome, Anka, the bridge, the hope of yesteryear. Oh, God, you're worthy tonight, Lord. You're worthy. All praise and glory belongs to Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, we reverence your name, and we sing the praises unto your name, hallelujah, 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 oh, we worship the Lord, hallelujah, praise God, I am on the mountain top, I won't come down, I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. So why won't you pray for me? I say, I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. Why won't you pray for me? Pray for oh, me. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. Why won't you pray for me? I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. You pray for me and I pray for you. You pray for me and I pray for you. You pray for me and I pray for you. Why won't you pray for me? I'm up on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. I am on the mountain top, I won't come down. Why won't you pray for me? mountain top I won't come down I am on the mountain top I won't come down I am on the mountain top I won't come down why won't you pray for you me? Pray for me say you pray for me and I pray for you you pray for me and I pray for you you 
joy to my soul. Hallelujah. What a testimony, church, to be able to say that the Lord has saved us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many people chasing after happiness, but we have joy. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for God, man. Hallelujah. Just worship him with an applause this evening. Hallelujah. 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 I am so grateful for what the Lord has done for me. Sister Marcia Kenty should be coming with the opening, sorry, with the devotional exercise. And Sister Hopi Scott will be coming with the opening prayer. So we'll take it in the order. Sister Hopi Scott with the opening prayer and Sister Marcia Kentish. Please stand, church, as we go into our devotion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just begin to entertain the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. As we prepare to approach his throne. Sister Hopi, hallelujah, bless the Lord, hallelujah. Father, who art in heaven, here are some of your children. We come to worship. We come, Lord, to give you praise for all your benefit. God, we do not see what we want to see as yet, but you name God. And we know that you going, those that believe and trusting in you, we know that you're going to do something supernatural. And so, God, we ask you for your entirely goodness, mercy, that each and every one of us that are here tonight, if there's a joy in our soul, let we worship you in spirit and in truth. If there's a joy this tonight, mighty God, bringing in our soul, mind, and body, let we give you praise. Almighty God, you are more than enough. Last yesterday gone. Last night was good. Father, you allow me to me never wake until 8 o'clock. Brethren, me not wake until 8. Me not lie down in a bed so late. And me can't tell anybody that God allow me to get me rest. And so tonight, they call upon me. Up as that, but God. So I'm here to deliver prayer. I ask you, mighty God, that you will sanctify my lips. Let it come with good, good words from the throne of grace. That, Lord, any unsaved is here, backslider, they will move from their seat and give you the glory. We pray that you will strip them, mighty God, in the name of Jesus. Bring them to conviction. God, people are dying. Men are crying. Some go out on their job and they did not make it back home. Father God, allow us to do not take this for granted. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pull down every stronghold and every pride and every selfishness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, spirit of the living God, we pray that you will minister to somebody as your word go forth. In the name of Jesus, let we do not look on anybody. Because none of us are good. None. We come by grace. And so, God, we ask in your Father that you will wake us up from our slumber. God, some of us are tired. Some are sick. But you know what they are here for. So I pray, God, that we'll bring out praise, worship to you tonight. Faith and courage, mighty God. Because we know you are not slack to your concern. And so, mighty God, curfew this place. That your people, the music will play, oh God, to the throne of grace. 
in the name of Jesus Christ, the praise and worship will praise you in spirit and in truth. It brings joy to my soul. And so, Father God, we pray that your will must be done. Lord, the one that is going to minister to the word, the word to us. I pray, Father, for coverage. Father, we, want, we need your blood at a time like this. Oh, God, we up against spiritual wickedness in high places, things that we cannot see with our natural high. Father, let your people, when somebody cry out, oh, God, like the dog that bark, even at night, and when the rest hear, they, they, and they look, they see that something about to happen. Father, we ask you for your protection. God, and as we worship, and as those who want to move, allow them to move in the presence of a holy God. Let them not be afraid of the terror nor the pestilence, but fly it by noon or night. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, cover the element as we cry out, as we hold up our hands to give you praise. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, you are in charge of this place. You are in charge of every bench that a child, a mother, a friend, a brethren sitting on tonight. In the name of Jesus, allow us to do not get comfortable. Now is not the time for us to get comfortable. Lord, let peace and love abide. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, allow us to let go and let God. Oh God, because no repentance is in the grave. And so, mighty God, you go before us. Do your work yourself, mighty God. Show up, mighty God, that, Lord, we will not criticize tonight. Tonight is not criticism tonight, but to worship you and hold up each other. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, we praise you. And we tell you thanks for all your benefit. And these mercy we ask of you. And we all say the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. You make it us to lie down in green pastures. You lead us in the path of righteousness. For your name's sake, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort us. Thou preparest a table before us in the presence of our enemy. Anoint our head with oil and let our cup flow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell, and we shall dwell, and we shall dwell. Church of God, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord of God. And we tell you thanks, Lord. Thank you for all you what you allow me to be said. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me hear you praise him one more time. Turn your Bibles with me to Malachi chapter 4, reading from verse 1 to the end. When you found it, say amen. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stumbled. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall leave them neither root nor branch. 
But unto you that I fear my name shall be the son of the righteousness arise with healing in his hand, in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the sole of your feet in the day that I shall do this said the Lord of hosts. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And ye shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the, the earth with a curse. Here ended the reading of God's holy word by saying, Glory be to the Lord. Turn your hymn to 279 as I journey through this land, singing as I go. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through him I must win.
may be seated if you can, church. And let me just express the warmest of welcome to each and every person this evening. I hope that you are happy to be in the house of the Lord. Can you just turn to mm -hmm. your neighbor and just tell them something nice, something to lift their day. Just imagine that they have not heard anything nice all day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see the smiles. So I know that something nice has been said. I love that, Trishana. I love the extra hug. Yeah, man, I like that. Let me welcome our host pastor, the Reverend James Lewis. Put your hands together for him. And I see that our first and only lady is in the house tonight as well. <laughs> Put your hands together for Sister Jackie. I see some members of the Pastors Council. Welcome to the service this evening. Welcome to our praise team and musicians. And I, we have our guest speaker, the Reverend Kevin Wilson. Sir, let me give you an extra special welcome. Thank you for being in Glendevon. And we look forward to hearing what the Lord has laid on your heart for us. And I welcome each and every person. We could not have prayer crusade if you were not in the house. Welcome to all the children. Put your hands together for the children, church. Hallelujah. And let me say welcome to the Dynamic Voices Choir who will be ministering to us this evening. Uh, let me also extend the warmest of welcome to our online viewers. And let me also ask if it is possible for you to come into the house. We look forward to you joining us this evening. We are having a wonderful time in the house. And let me tell you, you are missing out. It's not like online is not like when you are in the house. So if you want to come, if you can come, make the effort and come. We are happy to have you. We will now be having our theme song, Prayer Bells of Heaven, and that will be followed immediately by a special item from Sister Rohana Hyatt. And uh, in the same breath, I want to ask you to also get ready to give, as we will be giving along with the special item from Sister Rohana. Please stand, everybody. The hymn again, 276, Parables of Heaven. While we are living in this world of care, many the burdens that we have to bear. But say a parable at the Lord.
ministered to by Sister Ro Hannah. So I'm going to ask um, if you have your envelope for your special offering, you can also bring that envelope when you are giving tonight. Okay, let us stand as we bless the offering. Can we stand for the blessing of the offering, please? Mighty God, our Father and our friend, Father, we come before your presence this evening, God, as we stand, Lord, to enter into the act of giving. Father, I pray that you will allow us to give cheerfully and enthusiastically, Lord. Let us not give because we've been asked to give, but let us give, Lord, because we believe we should give. And Father, as we will receive the gifts that are given, I pray, mighty God, that it will be used for the extension of your kingdom and that whatever it has been planned for will be accomplished. Father God, I pray that you will return a blessing to the givers as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Good night, church. Psalms 21, ver uh, 121, verse 1 says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Um, sometimes we do tend to forget that our, our help actually comes from the Lord, and we go to everyone else or to anything else but God. So I use this song normally as a reminder that my help comes only from God. So I hope this song blesses your heart. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. The one who made heaven and earth. He said he would not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, he would not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee by day, not moon by night. Preserve thy soul even forevermore. My help, my help, my help, all of my help. Come Whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. He said he would 
would not suffer thy foot and thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. So the sun shall not smite thee by day. truly testify that God has been my help. God has been my keeper. He has been the shade upon my right hand. Hallelujah. When everybody else has failed me, I can say that the Lord has been with me in good times and bad. When I was good, he was with me. When I was bad, he was with me. Hallelujah. He is our help. I'm going to ask the members of the Dynamic Voices Choir to get yourself ready to minister immediately after the introduction of the speaker. And then after the Dynamic Voices, the next voice you will hear will be the man of God with the word that the Lord has prepared for us tonight. So our speaker, Bishop Kevin Marlon Wilson, is a vessel of God. He answered the call of God on his life since age 16. Since then, he knew his purpose was to shepherd God's people. He served on the council as the youngest member at 18 years of age in his local church, Burn Savannah New Testament Church of God. He then moved on to completing his Bachelor's of Theology at the Bethel Bible College. He also holds a certificate in Christian teaching from the Caribbean Christ for the Nation. Reverend Wilson has served as the chairman for the Mount Salem Primary and Infant School and is currently serving Builders Prep and Kindergarten. Reverend Kevin Wilson met and married the love of his life, Camille Yasmin Brown Wilson, for 12 years. The union has produced one child so far, Joshua Israel Wilson. Reverend Wilson has served at the Montego Bay New Testament Church of God as the youth pastor for seven years and is currently serving the John Zoll New Testament Church of God. His main strengths as a pastor are in the areas of leadership, teaching, and pastoral care. He is passionate about prayer and teaching Bible studies. Bishop Wilson serves a great God and loves the church of God and desires to see the church strengthened as people grow in their faith. 
uh, when the dynamic voice choir is through ministering, I'm going to ask the church to please stand as we receive the man of God. Good night, everyone. I have journeyed through the long, dark night out on the open. By faith alone, such unknown, and yet his eyes are watching me.
praise you. God, we magnify you and exalt you tonight. God, you are great and almighty. You are all powerful. They brought Dagon praise before the Lord. you. And Dagon head and body fell off. Hallelujah. But you remain almighty. All powerful you are tonight. Lord God Almighty, we surrender our life to you as a gratitude for your goodness. We just love you tonight and magnify you. You are a good God. And you do good things. To your name be glorified. And let everybody just lift your hand and love him tonight. Come on. Just praise him again. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah. You may have your seats, everybody. The Bible said praise is comely. The Bible allows us to know that God, Jehovah, live in our praises. When you come to church, you, you must give your ears a break. Your neighbor must give you a break, man. It's not like we come to church for 10 hours, you know. Probably two hours, two and a half, probably three. And when you come, you ever look upon and said, most time are we receive because guess what? When the word I preach, you are received. When the song I sing, you are received. The only time God get looking something is when you utter your own will open your mouth and praise him, you know. But otherwise, we are receive everything. Receive protection for husband and wife and children. Blessings from the house and the land and the car payment. And then now, when a time for us to love the Lord like a bike we crank, one, praise the Lord. And then staring at the moderator face and said, what make you stop now? We, we have to cultivate the lifestyle of praise. It, it must come from your, your belly. It, it can't just come from your mind. It has to come from down here. Where you appreciate him and love him. So can you love him? Just tell him something nice. Come on, love him, man. Love him. Every wife in the house tonight can, can tell you. That they will remind the husband, said, you remember when you just meet me, how you usually lyrics me? You remember how you usually tell me some good things? And what make you think God know why you tell him some lovely thing? Tell him how you couldn't read and have him teach you to read, man. <laughs> tell him how you went ugly. <laughs> and and he make you look nice. Tell him how you was wondering if you could become pregnant. And all of a sudden you have two children. Tell him, man. Tell him how you have been good. Tell him how your boss went to fight you. And him silence them. And bless you. God love to hear when you tell him the good things, man. Tell him, man. Jesus Christ. Somebody went to the doctor and the doctor said, boy, me don't have nothing to recommend. This one is new. But look at you tonight. You are in church tonight by the grace and love of God Almighty. He's, he's a good God. Glory, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. We greet the bishop, the reverend himself, and Mrs. Lois. Bless you, ma'am, and bless you, sir. And uh, moderator. And I was, well, when I came in, I stood at the back, and the person who prayed was praying for the preacher, and I received every bit of a blessing. Thank you, sister, for such a powerful prayer, Sister Scott. God bless you in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. And greetings to all my beloved people. We are one. A one heaven, there is none for Baptist or Methodist and Church of God. A one heaven, if you're black or you're white man or Syrian or Indian, one heaven. Oh, glory, hallelujah. This man was preaching 
Somebody sit at the front and everything the man preaching. He said, preach, preacher. And the preacher take the encouragement and preach and preach. And the preacher said, all right, I'm coming down. And the man said, a long time if you do that. <laughs> so, you know, going to be long like that. <laughs> Set up a preacher and then left the preacher all by himself. <laughs> Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 16, church. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. <laughs> I'm telling you, Reverend. <laughs> so, Matthew, of course, is the first book of the New Testament. So, if you are in the middle of the Bible, believe me, you are very far. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. We are at Matthew. Thank you, because nowadays people don't want to read the Bible again. Oh, when you go home, you read it. But you can say everything at this, we believe, man. The verbal inspiration of the Bible. From Genesis to Revelation. And listen what, how Matthew recorded. Matthew 16 from verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that the Son of Man am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say he that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. This is the word of God. And we said, Amen. Amen. But look back in your Bible. Let us look on the, the text, what was happening. So he was in the course of some Gentile. Probably he just taking a, you know, a time off from the the crowd, the hostile people that are always at him. And so, obviously this question was on his mind. So he asked his disciples, he's saying, what is it that people are saying about me? And obviously they were saying something about him because the disciples, they, they did not hesitate to tell him. They said, some say you are John the Baptist. Because remember, even Herod, when Herod heard what he was doing, Herod said, John the Baptist has risen up from the dead. And then the Bible said that before Christ come, Elijah would come. So when you see the mark, Elias, one is in Hebrew and one is in Greek. So the Hebrew say Elijah and the Greek say Elias. is the same person. And Jeremiah. And so... There was a prediction that Jeremiah, in the Jewish culture, that Jeremiah would come back from the dead. So you would understand why they mentioned this person and say, these are the things that they are saying. But then, yes, that's what the people there were saying, but now Jesus wants to know what the disciples think of him. So now, he moved out of the general and he comes very specific now. So he said unto them, But what do you have to say that I am? And Simon now of course would speak upon behalf of the other disciples. He answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And when the Jewish people said the son of the living God, they are, they are saying simply that he is equal with God himself. So they are saying that you are not just a good prophet. You are not just a powerful prophet. But you are God in human being flesh. Oh come on somebody lift your hand 
and bless the name of the living God Almighty. And so for the next short while that I will be with you, I wanted us to leave with you and said, let the church be the church. Let the church be the church. Nowadays, if you have been watching TV internationally, you would realize that there is a lot of mix-up going on uh, in the church body. And some big powerful men who should hold up the banner high have started to crumble, have started to compromise because they, they, they want the, the fame and they want to be popular. And, and so they compromise Jesus Christ and his integrity to please men. But let the church be the church in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah to the living God. I said, them buck up Joel Osteen and they ask Joel some question. Pierce Morgan asked him about gay and he was, well, you know, Pierce, I am not that kind of person, you know. And, and, and you know, God is love and, you know, you know, we don't condemn anybody. And, and so Pierce Morgan, no. Want to belittle the church, Pierce Morgan switched the question to Joel wife and said, um, Mrs. Victoria Austin, would you go to a gay wedding? The lady said, yes, I would go because they are my friends. Tie up a poor lady. The church must remain being the church. And our opinion does not matter. If somebody asks you something, base your opinion on the Bible. I watched the same Pierce Morgan interview Billy Graham's son, Franklin Graham. And he tried to twist Franklin. And every question he asked Franklin, Franklin said, according to the Bible, yes. I don't believe it. And he groans and said, but Franklin, I want to know what you think. And Franklin go back around again and said, according to the Bible, yes. because this is the mandate, this is how we live. Yes. You cannot represent yourself. They will tie you up any day. The Bible. If God Jehovah proclaim that adultery is wrong. And even if you married as a man to your wife. And you think as the man you can't get her pregnant. You as the man does not have the right to get to our next man and say oh it's my wife. So go ahead and get her pregnant. You, you don't have that power and authority. Because God already declared says wrong and you cannot change that. It cannot be compromised and negotiated. But why did Jesus ask the disciples the question though? Who do men say that I am? Why he asked them? You know, the Sermon on the Mount has been delivered and Jesus' ministry of teaching and healing is well underway when John the Baptist, you know, asked, is it that you are the Christ or should we look for another one? No, beloved people. It is time for the disciples who have followed him in this Galilean ministry to come clean and acknowledge the identity of this one who has called them and led them by his own mission into the world. Rather than telling the disciples his identity, he asked them who people believe the son of man to be. The son of man title Jesus most used most time. The disciples response to Jesus question. Some say that they are John the Baptist. Some said Elijah and Jeremiah. But Jesus Christ want to know. Because it's important as a born again believer for you to know in whom you believe and who you trust. Because if you don't have that relationship with God, you will take read up. How you will go to hobby man. How you will call people to do all kind of evil. You must know the Christ in whom you serve. Oh glory to the living God almighty. You must know who Jesus Christ is to you. Jesus follow up question in verse 15 and 16. But who do you say that I am? He said to them. He wants to know. And Peter. Speak up. He said you are the Christ. He said you are the Christos. The son of the living God. And Jesus said. Unto him. Flesh and blood. Has not revealed this unto you. But my father in heaven, he is the one who revealed this to you. 
Peter said, you are the Christ, the Christos. The word Messiah and the word Christ are the same word. The one is in Hebrew and the other one is in Greek, as I told you. And, and kings were anointed to office by anointing, as they still are. The Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, the divine king. Because flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but God Almighty revealed it to Peter that he is the true Christ. He is the deliverer. He is the mighty God. He is the champion. He is the battle fighting God. He is the one who can take you over your troubled water. He is the one who can give you strength to climb your mountain. You must know Jesus Christ to be happy and to be comfortable. Else stress will kill you. Peter did not arrive at this answer by his own astute intellectual capability. It was God who put it in his heart to speak it. If you don't know Christ personally, you will not be able to deal with delays or disappointments or denials. And the reason why some people come at church and them dead. And even if Jesus sitting at them lot, they want to move. Because they have experienced some setbacks and delays. And they have up Jesus in their hearts. Because they are saying that why Christ couldn't come through for me. But let me ask you, what is it bad that John the Baptist have done that he loses his head? But upon the last break, John the Baptist was praising Almighty God. Because there was a relationship between John and Almighty God. There are some people who God can choose to go through some difficulties. But there are some that God cannot expose you. You will backslide. There are some people that God can allow to go through some sickness and then he heal you and give you a testimony. Some in can do it. Because you curse and then somebody invite you for God to take a read up and somebody tell you, say, one man they out a road and somebody tell you, and then you mix up and tie up and tangle up and can't get back loose again. But you must anchor. Oh, what the song say, what the choir say. Your anchor hole. As big as the ship be. And the anchor drop, it keep it steady. When your anchor is in Jesus Christ. Oh, it doesn't matter what come up against you. You will continue to remain. You will continue to be strong in Jesus Christ's name. I have gone through many storms and battle, but let the church be the church, man. Oh, glory, hallelujah. When I was very sick and on the verge of death, an appendix rupture in me for six and a half days. One lady in my community, at the time my mother never saved it, walked by the woman house. At the time I was sick in the hospital. Call my mother out of the house and said, Give me one of the boy's shirt. Me know what do him. Somebody dep on him. You don't have to come. All me want you to give me a shirt. Me fix him. My mother said, May I tell you the truth that the man didn't believe in them or something. Me now and give him a shirt. He's sick in a hospital and my son and me are cry females. But me not going to give you his shirt. Why? Because my mother said me live a good life. Oh, glory be to the living God Almighty. He never said me mix up and live any hunky-punky life. He know that me walk straight. He tell the lady, says, no! No! And the same lady, son, ran into some trouble with the law. Came back to my mother. My mother said to her, say, trust God. She said, God can't help me in this one. Me I got a monkey man. And of course, he got a monkey man and crack. Saying son get to but a short while, probably two or some months after, his son was shot and killed by the police. Monkey man can't protect you. Oh God Almighty. Whatever name they have, they can't help you. The only help we have is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is no more help that we can brag and boast but the living God, the Christ, the Christos. He is our everything. Christ not only bless you and heal you, he bigger than that. I remember I went to America and there was a job. When we were going to college, we go to the summer and work to get money. 
and I went there to work. And there was a job vacancy available. And it has to be somebody who knows maths well. There was somebody who were majoring in mathematics. We were doing theology, the study of God and, and man. And one black Jamaican lady were working there. And the lady called me and said, Kevin, apply for your work. I said, Mommy, don't go in the, the maths business. The lady said, I hear me say, apply for the work. Of course, I apply for the work. And when I apply for the work, Church of the Living God, the, the boss, one white lady, called me for interview. The assistant manager, she was from Scotland. And when the general manager called me for the second interview, she don't make me go through it. She said, from this lady here, call you. You get the job because she don't like nobody. I said, he's a miracle working God Almighty. He can fight your battle. Oh, come on, somebody. I said, don't be afraid of any mountain. Oh, there were two white women, one from Scotland and one from America. And the America one says, from this lady, pass your Kevin work. I need to ask you nothing. The work is yours because God give me favor. And the other student, them from you and you take, who are majoring in maths, never get the work. They take two weeks and give me training. And the work was mine. At the time, 13 US dollars per hour. For four months, Reverend, I struck over 10,000 US dollars coming back home. God is a good God. He's not a one dimensional God. Oh, God Almighty. When you lie down in your bed and you worry about children, God know it and He might help you out. He might figure out something for you. Uh, when you think one next to man, I take away your husband. God will work something out for you. Uh, when you think that they might kill your son, God will work out something. Every time that come up in your belly and come up in your mind, God heard it clear, clear. And he's working on your behalf. He's a miracle working God Almighty. He's an untimed God. And all God asks for, let the church. Oh, glory, hallelujah. All right, go back nearby. Look at verse 18. Let us just wrap it up now and fix it up and bless you. Watch now. Watch verse 18. He says, on this rock I'll build my church. Now, the word church is an English word. The Hebrew call it synagogue. But the New Testament written in Greek. So from Greek, then of course when Rome take over the world and become world power, the Latin language take it over too. So that's why on Jesus' cross, it was written in what church? Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. That's the Bible. So, so, so the, the Greek word for church is ecclesia. And, and ek mean out, from, and to. And, and, and ecclesia mean call. So, so, so you, 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 when we say the church, we are saying the, the, the what? The, the call out once. When we say the church, the ecclesia, we are talking about those who have come from among them. We are talking about those who have been separated. We are talking about those who have been blood washed. We are talking about those who have been sanctified. We are talking about those who are on the path, the straight and narrow way. We are talking about a special set of people. And so the call out ones, you are different. You look different and you appear different. And you cannot follow and be like them. Because even if you hide and go dance, how you did they clap? You clap like a church. You don't know that they laugh off for you. So you did they dance and you step on the one job. And he bunks in front and say, watch the church. You are different. And, 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 and you must not try to fit in. Because if you get half cup of water and half cup of cooking oil and mix it for an hour and put it down, the oil is going to come back up top. Because oil cannot be water. And water cannot be oil. They are different. And, and, and so the church must look different. First time, especially New Testament. I'm not a close line preacher. I don't preach close. I preach the Bible. But good God. Your salvation should dictate how you look. Competition. In God's kingdom now, some people, well, may have to look young. And the world have the little shots up here, so I say, I want to bring it a little taller. 
And don't rent your heart, rent your, don't rent your garment, rent your heart. You know, you know, you know, you quote the text out of context. Every time me I go down in the town, I don't want to wear one little short store and I can't do it. Because I can't go say, oh, well, people want to say, say, no. I must remain setting an example. And that's how I live and I'm good with it. I'm happy with it. They are only for things that, they, they are not sinful things, but they would offend people and I refuse to do them. Because I am representing God Almighty. Me love shorts and ankle socks. Me refuse from wearing them because I don't want to be the stumbling block of anybody. And when you are a Christian, you must know that there is some things that you must not do. Because you are representing Almighty God. Hello. The Bible said he will beautify the meek with salvation. Tight pants don't make you beautiful. You are already beautiful. Come on, somebody. Eyeliner, mascara, and file eyelash don't make you look beautiful. In fact, they make you look strange. I, you are beautiful in front of the inside, and, and you must walk with that confidence. Oh, God Almighty. Yes, man. They stay there now. They lift your hand and bless the Lord. Are you me a chat? So, beloved people, so next time when, when you hear the church mention, you know that we're not talking about the nice, beautiful building, the concrete and steel and sun. No. Are you wonderful top that looks so good? Are you lovely chandelier? No. Church is people. Yes. You and me. Yes. We're the church. Yes. So Jesus says, I also tell you that you are Peter. So now Peter name in the Greek is Petros. So he said, you, because the Catholic people said that Peter was the first bishop and the church built on Peter because through Jesus says, upon this rock, I build my church. So them say that Peter was the first bishop. So in the Catholic church in Rome, Italy, they have one false statue of Peter and the people walk and kiss Peter too. Because then he says, Peter have the key for the church because Jesus give it to him Peter and Peter give it to them and and if you never know Catholic mean universal so they are saying that they are the only church so, so when you say Catholic church it has meaning they are saying that we are the universal church and and and, and so every other church you know if you notice the Catholic re refer to us as protestant because they said that we are protesting against the universal church. But that's not the church. The church, I've just told you the church. The church is who? The call out ones. The ecclesia. The, the church is not an, a, a group or organization or some philosophy. The church is those who have been blood washed and born again. Oh God Almighty. Suppose it wasn't for the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Dope it and kill some people. Then take up their little... Chalice and shake it and some smoke come out tight. Holy Mother Mary, Mother of God, bless us sinners. That couldn't do nothing, church of the living God Almighty. When I was a little boy in my church, the Baptists they used to say, they all, we are at the time, no prejudice or nothing, but at the time they used to say that we are mad because we speak in tongues. And they would come in church and they hear our mother grabbing belly and all in do for the service are grown. They couldn't take it. They said, I can't go down there. They made me feel so annoyed. But when they couldn't get pregnant, they would hide and come a fasting. And some mother would grab their belly and speak over it. And they would have to come back and say, pray again because I have two more children. Because the mighty power of the Holy Ghost was moving. That was the church, church of the living God Almighty. There was this young man in real life. He was acting like a dopey, put on white sheet. You know, one dark corner, jump on the people and run up and down and say, one bad dopey down there. And the people in God church and tell the old people, you know, them people ain't afraid of nothing at all, man. Man or whatever call them. And then tell the old lady them. And the lady then say, we are good on the feed dopey. Because if him are black the way, we have to get him out of the way because people are for God church. And the mothers then walk at the same place and the boy lose his head and jump out. Ah! And then bind him and bind him and bind him and bind him. Little half an ton idiot. Mad. Because he played the devil and end up lost. 
Because it's wrong with the wrong set of people. I'm talking about people who have authority and power. The church. I was listening to this preacher and he said that, you know, his father in the faith. He said, them man, they them days holy till they, they court and they never kiss them wife, not to have greetings until they get married. And the man went to South Africa. And the man said that, you know, there was this witch woman pouring alcohol in her frog mouth and drink it from the frog. And she had gone because Satan number one trick is to intimidate you. It's to get you afraid of him. And then he come to make the kill. But those men had nothing in fear at all. Good God Almighty. Nothing could not trouble them. And them, the man of God realized that the lady now possessed and the man drive out the devil from hell. Out of the lady and the lady baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. When the man reached home, they said those time it time hearty hot till one hole cut out in the wall for a little breeze to come in. The invention of AC wasn't yet. And all of a sudden, the preacher man said, you know, like an earthquake come now and the bed start to vibrate. And then this cold come in that you could see a breath in the frost of the toy room get cold. And the man bed was over there. And the man bed jerk and go over the corner. And the man of God rise up under the power of the Holy Ghost, the dunamis. The explosive. And a man said, false spirit, I recognize you. I drove you today. And you come back. Leave my house immediately. And the house come back normal, but the man bed was over there. And the man get up and said, no, this is not right. And the man says, come back, your false spirit. Come here. And the room was cool as ice again. The man says, my bed was over there. Put down the bed. I leave. And the man bed go right back over the corner. And the unclean spirit got to take its flight. I'm talking about the church of power. Oh God almighty. I'm talking about the church of the living God. Glendevan. With full authority. The Bible tell us in Mark chapter 5. That there was this man who possessed. And the disciples they walk a different route. The Bible Matthew described the man. He said the man was so fierce. That they, they used train to train him up and he burst it asunder. He was cutting himself with stone. He lived in the tomb. And the disciples walk at a different route. But Jesus knew that he was there. And Jesus Christ never asked any backup to come with him. His excellency alone, the Christus, the Christ. He walked exactly in the part of the man. And, and when he reached the man. Oh God almighty. And back up the devil now. Say what is your name and they... They said that we are legion. But that's not the nice part in the text though. The nice part in the text. You, you, the devil is a beggar. Look, you can't read Mark 5 when you go home. Uh, Satan, you think say, we are afraid or he's afraid. He am not. Oh Christ, I'm begging you, please. Is that you come to torment us before the time? Oh please, don't stand out into the abyss. And, and the devil, he's a coward and he's a beggar. But if you don't know, he will have you and push you all your life. And some people sit down there talk about us. So I'm going to talk about the devil. If I your boss, he and him already condemned to death, man. And so if you belong to Christ, you have to have this confidence that the devil has been defeated. And if he could kill you, you wouldn't be here tonight because he has no mercy. Jesus is the done. There is only one done. And his name is Jesus Christ, the Christos. There is no other done. He said, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And restore the man. And put him in his right mind. The Bible says when the people came out and said. Everybody came and said Jesus leave our town. Because there was a great fear struck them. They have never seen such thing. One man with so much power and authority. And Jesus Christ don't tell you greater is he. That is in you. Than he that is in the world. The church must be the church. The church must not hide anymore. If one man drunk and stagger come out there. Tell everybody back away. Me don't want nothing going on me. Oh, make sister so and so go, go pray because that the sister the powerful me. God is not prejudiced, man. If a 10-year-old boy trust God, he have the power where you have. Oh, glory, hallelujah. One night when I was in Waterloo and I was there preaching about the power of Almighty God. And I was there preaching 
and teaching, but you know, this heavy burden come upon me. And I don't know what's happening, but I was still preaching about the power of God. And, and, and you know, up on arrival, a man, he ran from the back right up to the front and his wife after him. And he ran and he fell down at the altar and everybody get covered and start to scream. When I was preaching about the power of God and I would be a hypocrite not to demonstrate the power that I was preaching about. And the, the wife says, can't forget her name, Cherry. Cherry said, Pastor, he went to work. He was working at a hotel, Pastor. And he went to work and he turned him in a fool, Pastor. The lady said, Pastor, and stripped naked. How me try to put on one little close upon him? The lady said, the last thing my husband said to me is, please, Oh, let me reach in one church. The last conscious thought come from the lady. He's that let me reach our church. And his wife, the man ran and fell down right in the church. And I put my hand up on his head. Because he lose his thought and was talking foolishness. And I speak in Jesus Christ's name. I said, you unclean, nasty spirit. I'm not asking you anything. I'm commanding you in the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to depart from this man immediately. And, and when I look, I never know that there was a prior champion sister at church. If you need help, God will send back up for you. You don't have to worry yourself. I never know that the sister was at the back of the church having some prayer. And when everybody run, nobody no come help me. Everybody stand up because they're afraid of Dopey. I am alone up there, but the sister run, come and grab him. And he told we pray and bring him back to his right mind. And when he came back to his mind, he says, where is Cherry? He says, see Cherry right there, so see your wife there. And he told them, walk out of the church conscious. There is power in the body of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And no devil can stop the power. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah to the living God Almighty. Lord, oh, glory, hallelujah. Just, just give me five minutes. Let me set it good. I have five more minutes. So, so Jesus said, you know what? Because Jesus said the confusion are coming up. So Jesus said, all right, you are Petrus. You are a little pebble. But, but Jesus, no. He, he said this testimony that I'm talking about is like a... A mighty big rock that cannot be crack up or, or burst. The rock is the truth that God revealed that I am the Christ. And whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. If you know the authority that lies in your belly, you would start to speak. If you notice that when flu going around some people, you, you know, a lady come on my church, come preach, you never come back. She take the mic and oh, you, I know that, you know, flu time ago around and I know I'm going to catch the flu. You know, come back around my pulpit, come put on curse upon the people who God. She, and when she see me holy part time, Rev, how is the church? Me know she asked back for an invitation. She can't come back. I preach life, man. The Bible says we must at life. Anybody come around the pulpit must preach life. You know, come talk about no dead, no preach, no put no dead upon the people them with me when me work so hard to teach and you just come take one sermon and mess them up she can't come back not coming back uh, no no she not coming back one opportunity and I you me a talk because I call you back so nobody look for me it's not you <laughs> beloved people Declare already, say, me not get up in a night fight, no dopey, because me don't declare, say, no dopey now come in a me house, go and hold me up all night. <laughs> hey, you see, if you ramp with demons, they ramp with you the whole night and play a game with you. And when you go to work and drive a pay sleep, the point of your crash, I set up. Yeah. Me get up and me declare it, me say, guess what, a me house this. And my bed this. I'm a nasty up with you and fight. I said, come out of my house. I go to my bed, bless my wife, bless my son, kiss them and hug them up and sleep. Oh God, peacefully. Oh God Almighty. I have Psalm 91. He says that God will come on his angels to protect you and keep you. He says a thousand may fall at your left and ten thousand at your right. 
But hello, don't worry, because it shall not come at your dwelling. When I left here tonight, free up yourself, man, and stop. Every thought upon your mind are demons. Everything happened to your son, up it upon you. You are testifying and talk about from man and the devil was on my back. And make sure you say when you come out, they say you left him out at the door. Nobody can come and give reverend any more stress. So, before you come in, shake him off of your back. Left him out there, so nobody carry me. Beloved people, my auntie, some people break away from a church, start up or next something. Invite her to come. God told her, don't go. Of course, she please our friend. God, the gathering. My next smaller auntie follow her go. And she told me what happened. She said, the pastor took out a cow horn and blew it on her. And she lose her consciousness, man. And for 10 me, I'm better sleep. And my mother called me. I said, Jesus Christ, what happened to one of my brother now? Because I know she didn't call me a most submerging. When I listen, I pay a bawling in the yard and screaming. I said, Jesus Christ, what happened? My mother said, Kevin, your auntie down here, she don't know herself. She had take off her clothes and strip herself naked. One church brother went there in the yard. When he came or something, the man left from Truro and said, my head jar this plane. So it would, it would be a distance from here. So to out of fear view. Say my good on a church we back up. My Christian, you know. And the lady possessed and him I go take taxi. Good on a church. If he get some help, he come back. For my brother, then run out of the yard and gone. Because they never see nothing like that. So me say, all right, my mother, no, no worries. Me say, friend, I'm not dead, nobody dead. Me say, for demons, me say, no problem, man. we can't handle that. No worry yourself. Me said, put the phone in her ears for me, please. He said, Kevin, she now hold the phone. For my mother, her weight, you know, big woman, fat. Me said, put her down and gently sit down in her stomach and hold on her hand. And put the phone in her ears. My wife jumped up same time and we go in agreement, man. And we said, you nasty spirit. I come on you with the power of Almighty God. I said, I come on you in Jesus Christ's name to depart from her. And she did on the phone, shackle, shackle, shackle. We said, there is no shackle in Jesus Christ's name. I said, we lose you by the power of Jesus Christ. I command your evil spirit. And I said, you shall not return. And we pray and pray until she jump out. She says, Kevin, me all right now. And I said, you unclean spirit, you will never go back in her again. And now for a while, God fill her with the Holy Ghost and she's a... Uh, Speaking tongues born again Christian to this very day. I, I wasn't in Westmoreland. I was in Cornwall Court. And she was way down in Westmoreland. But there is no distance in prayer. I speak God word. And God word was effectively not the next day or later. Immediately. I'm telling you that you have power inside of your belly in Jesus Christ's name. And you must know it that the church must be the church. The devil has get away with too much things. And we are taking it back in Jesus Christ's name. Oh glory, hallelujah. You have a knee and every time you get an easy comeback. And then you say, boy, this knee ain't a so stay. The pain will just leave me knee and then it come up on me. I know it, you know. I saw the pain stay. And you see when you leave me hip, it come on my neck next. And the devil say, okay, just like how you said, that's it. You must get radical, man. And, 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 and the man need to leave your body in Jesus Christ's name, man. And declare that this body is a temple of the living God Almighty. And you're not going to live in it. It going to be a healthy body. And it going to be a strong body. The Bible says Moses as 120 was as strong as 40. And God said he's no respecter of person. Some of you speak too much bad about your own self. Oh, pastor, you don't know me, my head no good. All pastor, you know, when the time get cold, all for me, teeth them, me know them are crap, me, them are kill me. 
And you expect to have a good teeth, it's not what happen. You have to speak life in Jesus Christ's name. You, you have to speak the word of Almighty God. Stop speak how you feel and speak God's word. Because if God said it, God can back it up in Jesus Christ's name. God doesn't need your help. God needs your confidence. And so you not need to sorry for him. You need to trust him and let him be God Almighty. Let us all stand in the house of the living God tonight. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. I said glory, hallelujah. You don't have to call your bad uncle to defend you. You don't have to call your bad cousin to defend you. Speak it, man, in Jesus Christ's name. Speak it over. The wife was working at a particular hotel. This girl every day in text said for her. If you know her well, she not chat, but when me come home, you know she give me the whole bill and receipt and the book. Every God thing she tell me. And, and I let me not pay attention. She has said, what me see a while ago? And so me have said, oh no, I'm going to say Kiara drive, you know? And the girl text said for her. Until she bring it to my attention and now I'm going to do something about it. I said, what's she name? And he tell me her name. And let me say, I hope nobody named Susie. Nobody named Susie in a church. Well, bless the Lord. Let me say, let me say Susie in Jesus Christ's name. She wasn't there, you know. I'm a host, me there. Me just ask her where she name. Me say in Jesus Christ's name, Susie. Yes, when I see she come out, not even tell her good morning. Me say, don't call to her again. Me say, don't look on her. Don't say nothing in the name of Jesus Christ. My wife come home and say, my husband, boy, three months later, he said, you know, say, girl, come apologize to me and resign. Me say, I fear a problem that. Me say, she run for trouble, the wrong set of people. If you mess with God, people, you are in trouble. Uh, we don't put no spell upon nobody, but if you come to fight, so help me, God, we're going to fight back. And we're going to fight back in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come on, somebody. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the principle, the powers. Don't be afraid anymore. Don't be afraid anymore, man. Don't be afraid, say, banker, take away your house and your neighbor go laugh off of you. Stop be afraid that, oh, God, they might take away my care and where people are going to say about me. Stop be afraid. It will affect your heart. And it will carry down your life. You will get less and less because if one, if one of the vessel bursts, you are dead. It's not, it's not about that worry, man. Because if a bank could not take your house and call call and take about a long time. But the miracle work in God will help you. Yes, when you go back to work tomorrow, stop fret about them and fire you. Because how much will you power work there where God can give you? And every God day you go to work, you can't happy. You not eat or you not sleep because God the supervisor fight me. And I want stop it. When I go back to work tomorrow, man, you want me to fight you, call to How you do? Walk one. Master, said, then, what happened, you know? Because God have your back. Yeah. Glenn Evan, stop, stop the fretting, man. Yes, start to have some joy. When last you really, you know, like happy? When last you like, you know, you're joyful? Too much worries are, are, are burden you to pull you down, man. You're the church, man. And God have you. So, while Katwe. In the morning, then come and me house a morning time and evening and cry. And we then cry, my heart get sorry for them and me have to feed them. And my cat then not kill no rat because I don't no rat on my house. And those food then come look. And if God can use me to provide for the cat, them, God have you covered. It's prayer time. I always say the altar is not for sinner. And we change the throne and then no pride come in that. People no want to come on altar. But any time I go out and if them a preach and where a man say I me, me get up. If you want to talk about your problem. Mm -hmm. If we preach, I preach, but I something I need for work upon, I don't care. Me I walk up there. And me I trust the Lord to help me. Because you see man, when you look for me, you have sitting and work upon too, you know. And you just go on like you are done. Like, oh God, like everything alright with me, pastor. And you know you work upon something, you know. So, 
Tonight, if you want to come to the altar, don't make the devil make you feel shame again. Your past sins we have done already. Don't, don't make him put no shame and guilt on you. So if you want to come to the altar for whatever reason, come on and, and make God do it. The altar is for you. And no, no demons, no peers, so me sure say God the angel there in the house. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, sister. Light that spirit. Run. Remember when we're in a tariff for the Holy Ghost, we make up my mind on it. As reverent in God, want to be with the Lord now, Reverend Grant. As, as, no, you know God, want Reverend Lewis. He was at Grangel, Reverend Grant. Still alive, God forgive. <laughs> we can't say no of the mass. <laughs> Conrad. When, when Reverend Grant say, who are the Holy Ghost? I run, me run, go up there. The whole night, me sit down about nothing, but I talk to me. Me up there because me say, no, sir, me can't, me want, me want some power. Me never had no pride, me put on the pride. God fix me. So you want know, whatever you come with, if you're kind of sensitive, nobody talk out loud because people are going to still hear what you're saying. You don't want nobody business, your business be somebody's business. So if you're kind of sensitive, you're praying in your mind, God will still hear you. But if there's something where you can pray out loud, go ahead. Come on, pray, Steve. Give me something soft and nice, you know. Just something nice. We just love the Lord and then we just pray and just go home in peace in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender a God who not only listens to, but he is a God who answers prayer. Almighty God, you're awesome and mighty. The Bible declared that by the blast of your nostril, you split the Red Sea wide open and the people walk on the dry ground with water on both sides. And when they reach the other side and Pharaoh and his army charge against them, you God send back an east wind and a west wind and close the Red Sea. And the people witness Pharaoh, horses and chariot wash upon the seashore. You are a good God. You are the champion God Almighty. Lord, I pray for your people tonight. That every demonic force that have put the spirit of fear upon them. We renounce your spirit of fear. We denounce you. We divorce you. We condemn you to death. We demand you not to come back to God's people. But the Bible says the love of God will cast out all fear. Lord God Almighty. If death is hanging over anyone's head at the altar, are their children or grandchildren? Great life giving God, I pray that it will be cancelled by the power of Jesus who you raise up from the dead. Every cancer that has been hidden in the bloodstream of your people. We burn it with the fire of the living God Almighty. 
We come on, press cancer to dry up. We come on, womb cancer to dry up. We come on, every cervical cancer to dry up. We come on, every fibroid to dry up. We come on, every nerves problem to dry up. Every power that is against the people of God, we bind it in Jesus Christ's name. Because Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by Jesus Christ's stripes. God, we cover Glen Devon with your blood tonight. We cover the lanes and streets of Glen Devon with your blood. God, we pray that you will release the cherubims and the seraphims. God, we pray that you will release the mighty warrior angels. That they will cover Glen Devon. That the bloodshed will dry up in Jesus' name. And the blood of Jesus will cover our communities. We pray against every gang violence. Your name is Jehovah Shalom. We speak peace in Jesus' name. We command peace to go forth. In the troubled mind we pronounce peace in Jesus Christ's name. Those who are supposed to be murdered tonight. We speak deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those who paid for somebody to be murdered. We cancel that transaction in Jesus name. And we said your blood will never lose its power. Because you declare when I see the blood. I will pass over. And no evil will befall. We declare the blood of Jesus Christ tonight. Because there is power in the blood. There is deliverance in the blood. There is healing in the blood tonight. God we magnify you tonight. God we shabak your name tonight. We adore you God almighty. That deliverance has come and we have received it in Jesus name. So bless your people, God. God bless Reverend Lewis and his wife and sons. Cover them up. Wherever their children are at this time, God, wrap them up under your blood from every power of hell. Prosper them. That whatever they put their hand to will turn to gold. God bless Glen Devon Church. That healing will be a regular part of this service. That this church will grow mightily and strong. God empower Reverend Lewis that no sicknesses or disease will touch him. But good health will be his. And as Psalm 91 verse 16 says, with long life you will satisfy him. Bless him. Bless his congregation from victory to victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your hands. Don't move yet. Don't move. The, don't move it. Come on. Surrender on to him. And I freely give. Oh, I will let. Come on. Let the church be the church. Oh, in, in his presence and stay. Come on, sing it out now. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Whatever you lose, unhurt will be loose in heaven. Whatever you bind and hurt will be also bound in heaven. Oh, oh, oh. We're going to bind some forces tonight. We're going to lose some forces tonight. Say, girl, I surrender. Come on, lift up your hands and sing again. I surrender. I surrender. We are going to 
going to get your deliverance tonight. I surrender, I surrender all, all to be my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Come on, give a shout out in the house tonight. Give another shout out in the house tonight. Somebody said break right now. Said break in the name of Jesus. Said loose in the name of Jesus. Come on, said loose in the name of Jesus. Shout victory in the name of Jesus. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, shake the Lord. Every chain that binds you, whoever may be bound tonight, or those who are watching via the, the social media, every demon, every principality, every power from hell that is upon you right now, I will block it, I discharge it, I lose you now in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, somebody shout. It's happening right now. Claim your victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey! Hallelujah! Come on, make a joyful noise on when God's children are delivered, they make nice, they praise God, they rejoice. Come on, somebody worship God right now. Somebody worship God. It is happening right now. Deliverance is coming your way right now. You are receiving your miracle right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I release the power of God over your life right now. Hallelujah! Have a sickness. Have a principality. The spirit of poverty. We break them right now. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout. Somebody rejoice in the Lord. Somebody magnify the name of Jesus tonight. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yes, Lord! Victory! Victory! Do you know who is he? Who he is? The about the Christ. The son of the living God. Flesh and blood ought not reveal it unto you. But my father, which is in heaven. You have to just look at some things, look at some things and, and just rebuke them. Devil, take your hands off God's property. Leave my mind alone. Leave my husband alone. Leave my sister alone. Leave my wife alone. Leave the church alone. Leave the community alone. Take your flight. And go back from whence you came. In Jesus name. We pray. And God delivers. Hallelujah. God bless you. Clap your hands for Jesus, everybody. What a night. We serve a big, mighty, and powerful God. Just point your hands at the preacher. Sister Lewis, just come and lay your hand on and Reverend and just, and just breathe a word of prayer. Cover him. Cover him. Hallelujah! Come, come Sister Mela, join her. Sister Mela, join her. Join her. Just, just join her and just cover Reverend Wilson. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As you go back to your seat, go back, believe in God. Let me just lay my hand. Let me just, Father, in the name of Jesus, as you have led me to lay my hand upon your daughter, I lay my hand upon her now. Whatever condition, whatever situation, God, I break it now. I bless her. I cover her. And I claim victory for her now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be blessed. In Jesus' name, praise God. Thank God. Thank God. In the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Because when you stand in the name of Jesus, no power, no darkness can stand before you. God bless you. As they are praying, I want to thank 
Reverend Wilson, very much for having accepted the invitation and having come and having delivered the word tonight. Let the church be the church. No mix up. No God for yourself. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Praise God. I want to thank the moderator, Sister Reed. Put your hands together for her. The praise team and just about everybody. The officers. And, and let me just see the officers after church for just a minute, please. And the members and just about everybody would have joined us tonight. I want to thank you very much. Those in social media, we invite you to, to join us tomorrow night, 7 p.m. sharp. God has another word for us. Amen, church. Deliverance through prayer. We are, you're going to get your deliverance. You're being delivered already. More is still on the horizon. Receive it. Could you please stand, everybody? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. What a night. Lord God, what a night. You see, we are, we are not going to pronounce any benediction tonight. Carry it over. Amen. Go home rejoicing. And claim whatever you didn't claim in church. God bless you. You are dismissed. In Jesus' name. Officers, just one minute, please. Don't delay. The longer you take, the longer.